What's good everyone? Thank you for stopping by to visit the channel for this upcoming game preview of the Big 12 Championship game. If you want to hear a different take of college football from an analytical perspective, if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, and select all so you won't miss another video. Also like the video, it helps the channel grow, and give me your score prediction in the comment section below even if you agree or disagree. First off, Baylor fans, welcome to the channel. And this will be the second Oklahoma State preview I have done since I started this on YouTube. So Baylor and Oklahoma State for the Big 12 championship game. Oklahoma State got the best of the Bears early this year in Stillwater to a score of 24 to 14. The Bears are coming off a thrilling win against Texas Tech after racing out to an early lead. And Oklahoma State had Bedlam against their hated in-state rival where the defense closed the deal. This time, we got a playoff spot on the line for Oklahoma State. If they win, they're going to make it really hard for the committee to make a decision. So as we review the tail of the tape, both defenses have overwhelming advantages against their offensive counterparts. The Cowboys are a top five defense, and that is not a misprint. And they're also a top 10 team in overall quality. SP Plus has Oklahoma State as a two point favorite with a 54% win probability, while the Vegas line is currently at four and a half in favor of Oklahoma State at the time of recording. The game lived up to its name. It was definitely bedlam. When you look at the success rates between the two teams, Oklahoma State probably should have won this game by more than four points. Oklahoma's defense had difficulty stopping Oklahoma State, but this game was marred by the turnovers both teams had. They combined for six, but the theme of the year was the Cowboy defense stepping up and making big play after big play, even when everything was going wrong for Oklahoma State on offense after they were down by nine late in the third quarter. The Bears started out the game hot against Texas Tech, but they tapered off a bit. That fourth quarter, Baylor looked as though they were trying to put the game away, and Texas Tech just kept coming back after them. Now, Baylor was without Gary Bohannon, their starting quarterback, but Blake Shapin was more than serviceable in my opinion, and he proved that on the third play of the game where he went deep for a touchdown pass. A 43% success rate is solid. It's not necessarily great, but it is over the FBS average. So after about seven weeks in the season, I get enough data to generate opponent-adjusted stats. In college football, the easy thing to do is to view how teams play based on the raw numbers. But the problem with using raw numbers is they leave out a lot of context. Um, just to give an example, we like to hear the term, they ain't play nobody a lot. So what these opponent adjusted stats do is it gives us that context. And this is done by looking at the offense versus defense. So when Baylor has the ball, and they already know this already just based off of the first game, Oklahoma State's defense is legit. They're the real deal. If you were looking at this, you would think, oh, wow, this looks like how they were on offense circa 2011. But no, these are defensive numbers and your eyes are not tricking you here. So Baylor is going to have some issues on offense. But if there is a chink in the armor of the Cowboy defense is when they're misaligned, they can give up the big play. They like to play fast. So I would look for Baylor to take advantage of Oklahoma State being ultra aggressive and run some misdirection. Also, they may need to take chances downfield by throwing 50-50 balls. Blake Shapin showed that ability to take the deep shot, especially early in the game where he hit a 61-yard bomb. The Baylors went deep a bunch, but Oklahoma State is going to be a different animal. The Cowboys are allowing 53% of what their opponents are scoring this year. When Oklahoma State has a ball on offense, the Baylor defense has the advantage here. They are a solid bunch in their own right. They are a top 10 rush defense and an overall success rate. Their main focus is to win on standard downs and force Oklahoma State in obvious passing situations. In game one, Jalen Warren was toting the rock and Tay Martin found some real estate in the Baylor secondary, and they may need to do it again this time. This season, Dave Aranda has been phenomenal in halftime adjustments on defense. The Bears are 11th in third quarter defense, while the Cowboy offense dips to 119th in offensive efficiency. And if you were watching that game last week, you were probably thinking, yeah, that sounds about right. Because that third quarter against Oklahoma last week was an unmitigated disaster. In the previous years, I used to run a computer model to project scores for each game. This year, I've created a rating system that is based on the principles of ELO, but it is structured by the point differential of the average college football team. If you're not familiar with ELO, after every game, the winning team will take points from the losing team. The difference between the ratings of the winner and loser determines the total number of points that were gained and lost after each game. If the high-rated team wins, then they receive a fraction of the rating points from the low-rated squad. 
But if the lower rated team wins in an upset, then they receive a huge rating boost. So the bigger the upset, the bigger the boost you get. And as what goes into the rating system, it is a few parts of your weighted recruiting average, some parts returning production, and recent ranking history, and so on. So these ratings that I use are different from the tail of the tape, where we have SP plus and F plus. In this game, the model has Oklahoma State winning by the estimated score of 27 to 19 with a 68% win probability. So it's time for predictions. In game one, I am not sure if everyone remembers how difficult it was for Baylor to move the ball against Oklahoma State. If you want a reminder, here's the advanced box score of that game. Baylor had one scoring opportunity. If you're new to the channel, and you probably are, a scoring opportunity is when you get the ball inside the opponent's 40-yard line. That scoring opportunity was when Bohannon had a one-yard touchdown run. To compare, Oklahoma State had five scoring chances, so they were able to move the ball effectively against Baylor's defense, and that was including the three turnovers they had in the game. Now, it is hard to beat the same team twice in one year, and I have no doubt Dave Aranda will have his team ready to go and I think the change in offensive philosophy is going to be different for Baylor since Bohannon may not play this Saturday. I see them taking more vertical shots downfield. But when I see Oklahoma State just fighting like hell the way they did last week when everything went against them, they just kept coming after Caleb Williams. Even after he broke that big run, the defense didn't quit. I think Oklahoma State has just enough offense to get the W in this game. And for me, I think it's going to be similar to game one. It's going to be a little difficult for Shapin to come in after that defense. But I have the Cowboys winning by the score of 28 to 21. And with that being said, that is a wrap for another game preview. Let me know what your thoughts are in the game in the comment section below. Give me your score prediction and tell me why your respective team is going to win the game. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give the video a like, and if you love college football as much as I do, hit the subscribe button if you want to stay updated with the latest previews and the occasional highlights. And as always, thank you for watching, and thank you for visiting the channel.